Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland and in this short video, another video dealing with uh, the geometric mean rate of return uh, we're going to look at a particular example, we're just actually going to just do this particular calculation uh, which is to calculate the, 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 the mean rate of return with respect to uh, I suppose let's say uh, the, the valuation of a portfolio over, over, over time. Okay? Uh, in a previous video we've actually had a look at the relationship between the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean and the geometric mean rate of return but when we're dealing with when we're dealing with financial data okay, where we have returns and they could be positive and negative okay uh, what's the most appropriate average measure is the geometric mean and in particular the geometric mean rate of return so that's the most appropriate okay so let's have a look at this scenario Bob's a private investor he purchased a portfolio of shares on the 1st of January 2014 for 500,000 euros. The value of the portfolio on the 1st of January 2015 was 900,000 euros, so it increased. Uh, the following year, the value was 700,000, so it decreased. And its price on January 2017 uh, was 750,000, so there was another increase. And what we want to do, we want, we want to calculate the average annual rate of return uh, with respect to this port portfolio, okay? The value of this portfolio. So I think what we should do is we should just create a table, first of all. Okay. Here's our table. Maybe down here we have the year. Okay, so we have uh, 2014. Okay, we have 2015. We have 2016, and we also have 2017. And let's put down the value associated with the portfolio over them particular periods of time. In 2014, it was 500,000 euros. Okay. In 2015, it was 900,000 euros. In 2016, it was 700,000 euros. And in 2017. Um, it was 750,000 euros. Okay, uh, so that's the value of the portfolio. Now we want to calculate the returns okay, that were achieved okay, across each one of these years. So what return was achieved going from 2014 to 2015, from 2015 to 2016, and from 2016 to 2017. So there's three possible returns that we have, and what we want to do is we want to calculate the average of them returns. But don't forget to calculate the return. A return is simply equal to today's price minus yesterday's yesterday's okay divided by yesterday okay that's what we have okay so let's say between 2014 and 2015 so we want to calculate the return on 2015 okay that was achieved let's call this r1 uh, well it's equal to today's price which is 900,000 900,000 minus yesterday's which is 500,000 relative to yesterday's which is 500,000 euros. So you can actually see what we actually have here is we have 900 minus 500 gives us 400 divided by 500. So that's four divided by five and gives us, there was an increase of, it's 0 0.8, it was an 80% increase in the value of of the, of, of, of the portfolio. So this is 0 0.80 here, 0 0.8, there was an 80% increase. What about in 2016? So in 2016, uh, or let's call this R2. Well, 2016's price is 700,000 minus yesterday's, which is 900,000. Okay, relative to yesterday's, which is 900,000. Okay. Uh, that gives us, well, 700 minus 900 gives us, 700,000 minus 900,000 gives us minus 200,000. So we have minus 200,000 divided by 900,000 is the same as minus 2 divided by 9, okay, which gives us a value of, there was a minus 22% decrease in the, in the value, in the value of the, of the, of the portfolio. So it was minus 0 0.22 was the value here. And what about in 2017? In 2017, Okay. Let's call this R3, the return. Um, it's the price of 750,000 euros minus the previous days, which is 700,000, previous years, relative to the previous year, which is 700,000, okay. which gives us a value of, well, that's an increase of 